why you should fish Padre Island National Seashore and not go anywhere else. Little whiting, little small whiting. I think it counts as a fish. I don't know about that. It's a pretty little whiting now. I have something on me that's bigger than that. You know what they say though? <laughs> Is if you kiss a no, fish, no, no, I'm not kissing that. you'll have good luck the rest of the day. Look what we found, a jet ski. That's an expensive freaking uh, Alabama. That wasn't here. The Alabama. Other day. Huh. So somebody sunk that and it washed up on shore. All right. I don't know. On the lightweight, fierce three, guys. Here he comes to the beach. Look at that, guys. Nice, beautiful fish, man. Look at him. Oh, now that's worth it. Oh, 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 I got him, guys. Oh, that's a big old freaking trout. He's gonna spool me out. That is a huge trout, guys. That is a monster freaking trout. I'm gonna lose him. I know I'm gonna lose him. He's gonna spool me out. Oh my God, I seen him come in and hit that thing. It's a freaking monster, guys. That is a monster. Holy cow. Holy cow. Oh my God. Oh no. No, 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 not on this pole. That's a freaking, that's gotta be like a 30 inch trout. He is freaking huge. It's a monster, guys, a monster. Oh my God, don't, don't, don't. He's gonna spool me out, I know he is. We gotta tire him out, guys. Oh man, we gotta tire him out. We got to tire him out. On this little pole, a big old, that, that looked like a, over a 30 inch freaking trout. That is not a freaking ladyfish. That is a monster freaking trout. Oh my Lord. Tire him out. Do not break the line. Do not break the line. Get away from my line, Pelican. That is a monster trout. That is a monster. This is what it's all about, guys. This is what surf fishing's all about. I'm telling you, when you sit there and get a hit like that, and I actually seen him right when it come up right here, he come up and freaking grabbed it. Oh, crazy, he's going in. We need to get him in. He is a monster freaking trout. This is a monster. Oh, it's either a monster trout or, oh, he's big. He's freaking huge. Don't break off, don't break off my line. Do not break off my line. Oh man, this might be a red. This is a huge freaking fish. Come on, come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. No, no, don't go back out, no. Come on, guy, I'm gonna let you go. Just come in so I could show everybody. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Damn, he's going back out, guys. He is going back out. 30 mile marker on pins. Big, it looks like a redfish. Big bull red. Oh man, he hasn't spun me out. Oh, come on. He, but he wants to go back out. There's nothing I can do about it on this little pole, man. Oh, come on. Come on, get tired so I can drag your butt in. Get tired. This is a big monster. Come on. I'm, I'm about 20, I'm about 50 feet from the freaking beach. Come on, come on. Oh Lord, guys, this is a monster. This is a monster. And he hit it right in front of me too. I knew that freaking gold spoon was gonna pay off right here because I seen the pelicans hitting the water and I seen something big swimming out there. This is a monster freaking red. I'm afraid to get him right here. I'm gonna try to get him right here where I can lift him up. He is a monster, man. He's still fighting me. If I could get a hold of him, but I know not to lift fish out of the water like that. I think it is a big old red. I thought it was a trout, man, because it was real long. We gotta get him up on the beach. He's getting tired. And we gotta go through this deep spot here. This makes it all worth it today, guys.
you're going to come surf fishing, just come down to Padre Island National Seashore. Spring and summertime and, and part of the fall, it can be quite busy on Padre Island National Seashore the first five miles. Usually the first three miles, it could be, you know, wall to wall people. But if you get down to about the five mile marker, it starts to thin out a little bit. And a lot of times you can make it down to the 10 without four wheel drive. I'm watching cars, I'm like at the seven mile marker and I'm watching cars that are not four wheel drive go by here today and um, I, they don't seem to be getting stuck. So some days you can go all the way down to the 20 mile marker with no four wheel drive. But if you come to Padre Island National Seashore, I would say 90% of the time you are going to catch fish. Now it might not be a big huge redfish, big trout, big drum, uh, pompano, but at least you're going to catch some whiting on most days. Uh, it's very rare that you don't come out here and at least catch whiting. And I did catch one today, so, uh, and I'm sure if I stay here longer, they'll start moving in and I'll catch more and stuff like that. But when you come to Padre Island National Seashore, you want to make sure you have the right setup. You know, you want to make sure that you have seven or eight foot decent rod, saltwater rod. Make sure because once you use it here, you get any salt water on it and it's it's not made for salt water uh usually by the time you get back to austin or dallas or whatever it's already got it's already destroyed um, unless you rinse it and stuff like that so i would get you some good pen battle threes seven eight footer uh, you can get the whole combo together you want to use some kind of pompano rig like this for example you can get these on amazon they're called tackle crafters these are the cheaper ones anytime i don't have stanfield tackle pompano rigs then I'll usually buy these. And if I can't get these quick enough, I'll go by Walmart and get the real cheap ones. But that's one option right there on Pompano rigs. I'm gonna be giving away some really good Pompano rigs on my Patreon page that you guys could try out if, uh, if you're a member. And uh, you'll have a link to Stanfield Tackle so you could purchase your own. He'll ship them to you or you could pick them up locally down here, however you wanna do it. But that's one Pompano rig that I use. This is another type of pompano rig that you can use. Notice it's got two hooks and they're painted hooks and they're very small hooks. So one thing you don't need out here is big gigantic hooks to catch fish. A lot of people think you need a big giant hook to catch a big old redfish or a drum. I've caught them all on these little bitty hooks and uh, with no problem. Make sure you get you some good pompano rigs. Have those in your tackle box every time you come down here. You could also use mullet on these, but I, I usually don't use mullet on these. I'll use live mullet or um, any kind of cut bait on a single drop like this. You notice it's a much bigger hook. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going after big redfish because of a much bigger hook. I could have a small hook on here like the one I'm using on that one pole. It's just a single drop with a same size hook as the pompano rigs and I've caught big, big drum and stuff like that on that. Make sure you have use some of these. Now make sure you don't go to Academy and get the wired uh, leaders where, where you have the hooks and it's all metal and stuff like that. That's just not going to work down here. I've caught sharks on these. I've caught sharks on the pompano rigs. Save yourself some money. Don't go to Academy before you leave and spend 400 bucks on tackle that you're never going to use. These are really good. These are made from Stanfield tackle as well. I'll probably take it out of the bag. I hate taking them out of the bag because they're a pain to get back in. But you could see right here it's, it's a pretty good setup right here. It's, that's the size hook that's on this one right here. And you would tie your line off here. You have your hook up here and you have your weight down here. So these are excellent right here. Uh, if you want to target, you know, bigger fish or whatever. And I mean, like I said, you could still catch uh, a big fish on a small little pompano hook. Uh, bigger ain't always better, guys. And uh, you can bring in sharks with these as well. But if you're going after sharks and you want to get the correct rigs, and that I don't know because I don't, I don't fish for sharks. I don't intentionally try to catch sharks because sharks are um, a whole different level. And a lot of sharks die after they've been caught. So I just, I prefer not to catch sharks. I have a lot of respect for sharks. They're the... Uh, one of the top predators, if not the top predator in the ocean. And uh, without them, 
we wouldn't we wouldn't have any fish <laughs> we wouldn't have anything probably get you a good rig set up pompano rig or this or a, a single drop setup if you're using 14 foot rods and stuff like that you could use these setups as well breakaway tackle makes a lot of uh, his own custom setups and they're pretty cool he's got one that after you cast out once it hits the water it will release the weight and stuff or the bait check out breakaway tackle if you're interested in his gear and stuff like that i'll put the link in the description lead is very very expensive so you want to make sure you get the right weights look at my surf report see what the current's going to be like on the day you're going to come down here how rough the surf's going to be and that'll determine what weight mainly the current determines what weight you use let me show you some of the weights i use depending on the current well like today if the current wasn't so strong i'd be using a four ounce and sometimes i'll use these like bullet weights whatever they're called uh egg seekers i don't remember what they're called but that's a two ounce there and then i use a sputnik i'm i'm really not using six ounce anymore i'm pretty much using these four ounce weights right here with the metal on it, which would stick in the sand, that's what I use now. You always wanna have fish bites. This could be the difference between you not catching any fish and you catching fish. Sometimes they don't bite on mullet, sometimes they don't bite on shrimp, sometimes they don't bite on piggy perch, sometimes they don't bite on croaker, and you wanna have these and you wanna have multiple flavors. Today, what seems to be working is easy flea. I'm only getting bites on the easy flea. You could see that I've, I've, I've got easy clam, easy flea, easy crab, and this would be easy shrimp. So they're not biting on anything else but easy flea today. Fishing Padre Island National Seashore, that's the best thing to do, guys. Even if you can only go to the five mile marker, pull over, find you a decent spot, look at the way the surf, the waves are breaking. If the wave breaks over here and the wave breaks over here and nothing's breaking in the middle, after you've watched it for a little while, throw your lines right there where it's not breaking. And just look for different things on the beach. Look for a lot of debris coming in. Like over here, there's a lot of trees washed up on the beach. And that looks like a good area right there. Uh, where over here, you don't see any, any, you see one over here behind me, but you don't see much of anything. So I should have probably fished right there. Hush, hi, hey, hey. On a Padre Island National Seashore, the best place to fish, I think, is between the 20 and the probably the 40 mile marker. Down there with what they're called the high banks and, and stuff like that. Uh, little shell, big shell. I think that's the best place to go because a lot of times you could be up here and the water could be dirty like this and you get down there and it's clear. I usually always try to go down there, but I got a late start today, so I stopped about the seven mile marker. You got to make sure you have a reliable vehicle because it's expensive if you have to get towed out of here. So make sure that your vehicle is reliable and working order, your batteries work and everything. Because if you get stuck down there 20, 30, 40, 50 mile marker, depending on what time of year it is, you could be stuck down there for a while and it's going to cost you a good thousand, fourteen hundred bucks to get towed out of there, if not more. If you come out here uh, right now, usually in the month of uh, March, April, and a little bit of May, it's extremely windy, and the surf is usually tore up, and it's usually brown water most of the time during those months. Every once in a while, you'll get, a, you'll get some clean water. Uh, so the best time to come out here to Pins, I think, is between the month of June, well, late May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, January, and February. Those are the best months to come out here fishing. Always, always make sure you have a silver or a gold spoon with you. A one ounce silver or gold spoon, like this one right here. Always make sure you have one of these because I'm telling you, you won't regret it. Top water works great. The silver spoon works great on days like that. Always make sure you have a spoon and a top water and uh, always carry a, a rod set up just in case you're driving down the beach and you see the birds hitting the water. <laughs> Because uh, believe me, if you see that you don't have your rod set up, then uh, it's going to take you some time to get that set up. And by that time, those fish could have already moved a quarter mile down the beach. I'll usually carry one of the lightweight setups with a, with a silver spoon, depending on if it's winter or summer. I'll use silver in the summertime, and I usually use gold in the fall and winter time. I also have one of my bigger rods set up in case there's some Jack Cravel out there or there's larger fish, just in case. So I always have two, I carry six rods and reels with me. So two of them 
will usually have spoons on them. If you don't have four wheel drive, you can go the first five miles. And a lot of times you can go the first 10 miles. I mean, I'm, I'm seeing cars go by today that aren't four, four wheel driving. I'm at the seven mile marker. Uh, just depends on the tide. You know, if you got a real low tide like today, where low tide is actually, I think, 1030 tonight, and you can literally drive down next to the water most of the way. The only thing you got to watch out when you're coming on Padre Island is during nest turtle nesting season. You got to be very careful uh, not to run over a turtle and stuff like that. And I've caught plenty of big redfish out here. I've caught plenty of uh, big trout. I've caught a, a couple pompano, big pompano, and a lot of small pompano. Uh, lots and lots of whiting out here. So this is a great place for you guys to bring your kids. If you have smaller kids, hey, hook them up with some whiting, man. They'll love that. All day long, catch some whiting. Just bring you some fish bites and you're good to go. You really don't have to buy any other bait. Sam flea flavor and some clam flavor and you're good to go. Also, the reason why, you know, I think you guys should always fish Padre Island National Seashore is because there's not a lot of people. You might be the only one out there and you could see somebody maybe a mile away. You don't have all the cars and golf carts going down the beach like you do between Port Aransas and uh, Packery Channel and Packery Channel and Padre Island National Seashore. I really think for you guys that are coming down here on vacation, you only got a couple of days, maybe three or four days or two days, I think you should come out here to Padre Island. Yeah, it might be a drive from your hotel or motel, but it'll be definitely worth the drive uh, coming out here. There's a lot, of, lot more experienced surf fishermen than me out here. You know, I don't claim to be a, a, a professional surf fisherman, but I'm just sharing my knowledge and, and telling you what I use to catch fish. Now, I don't always catch fish when I come out here. You know, some days I just catch whiting. Now, if you don't want to get in the water because you're scared of stingrays and you got to be very careful when you're down in this area, especially if you're down to a 40, 50 mile marker and you get hit with a stingray, it's going to be a really, really, really terrible ride back. It is. So you got to be extremely careful. If you don't want to get in the water because you're worried about sharks or stingrays, then you probably want to get you a 14-foot rod and watch Breakaway Tackle's videos on how to long cast. Or if you live down here, he has every Saturday, he has a long casting practice. So you could go there and learn how to long cast. This is one of the most beautiful beaches in Texas. This is nature. This is uh, the clo closest you can get on a beach to nature. It's, it's great. It really is. You can see coyotes out here. If you're lucky, you can see a sea turtle climbing up the beach. There's been beavers out here. There's been uh, alligators out here. And there's been all kinds of stuff out here. So you never know what you're going to expect. And you'll see a lot of migrant boats the further south you go down. And you could go all the way down to the Port Mansfield jetties. And that, that's the end right there. And that's a pretty cool spot if you if you feel like driving all the way down there, I think it's like 50 miles, 55 miles. I think once you start coming here, this will be the only place you go. It really will. I really appreciate you guys watching this video. I know it's not much. Make sure you check out our Patreon page, uh, patreon.com forward slash Texas Beach Bum. Uh, it's got all kinds of information on there, how to, surf reports, uh, every pretty much every fish species you can catch out here and what you need to use to catch them and so on and so on. And I'll be adding to that. I'll be adding bluefish and some other stuff as well. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And we will see you next video. Peace, guys.